Hello, and welcome to this course on chatbots and conversational software. Conversational software is not a new idea. In fact, the invention of the keyboard and video screen terminal brought on the first wave of command line apps back in the 1960s. To use a command line app, you have to type instructions using a language that's very strict, but already much closer to human language than the underlying machine instructions. Around the same time, the ELIZA program was created. This now famous program was able to hold a conversation by using a rule matching engine. And despite the relatively simple code behind ELIZA, it's actually quite a compelling conversation list. In this chapter, you will build your own minimal version of the ELIZA chatbot. In the following chapters, you will learn how to use regular expressions as well as machine learning to extract meaning from freeform text. You will build chatbots that can query a database, plan a trip, and help you order coffee. You'll see that often, the tricky part of building more complicated bots is to keep track of the state of a conversation. You'll first learn techniques for avoiding this statefulness, which is usually the easiest solution. Later, you'll learn how to handle state in the cases where you really have to. In this first set of exercises, you'll start with the basics. The first bot you'll build is called EchoBot because it simply echoes back to you whatever you say to it. For simplicity, all of the bots that you build in this course will receive messages in Python code and will print the responses to the screen. At the end of the course, we will provide you with some Python code for connecting your bots to various messaging apps. To build an EchoBot, you need to define a respond function which takes a message as an argument and returns an appropriate response. Here, we define a function using the keyword def, then the name of the function, then its arguments in parentheses, and then a colon. The body of the function is indented by one level. We specify the output generated by the function using the return keyword. If a function doesn't have a return statement, that means it returns a none. One way we can insert variables into a string in Python is by using the string's format method. Inside the response function is a string containing curly brackets. These act as placeholders and will get replaced by the value of the argument we pass when we call format. To keep track of everything that's being said, we'll define another function called sendMessage. This prints what the user just said gets the response by calling the respond function, and then prints the bot's response as well. Even when we know we're talking to a bot, it can feel a little strange to see a response come back immediately. It just doesn't feel natural. We can create an artificial delay by importing the time module and running time.sleep, passing the number of seconds to wait as an argument. In this example, we've created a half-second delay. Now it's time for you to create your own EchoBot. 